Hello everyone, my name is Miguel and this is going to be a fun one. So please stick around. Okay, so anyone that has been following me for quite some time on my social media journey knows by now that I'm not the biggest fan, honestly, of homage watches. I've criticized them before on my channel, on the podcast, but yeah, th this is gonna be this is gonna be interesting. There are some people that go as far, you know, to say that homage watches are actually fake watches. I personally understand, uh, you know, why they exist in the market and also understand why they have a place in this hobby. In fact, there's a lot of channels out there, uh, big channels, that actually kind of make a living out of this, right? Uh, reviewing a bunch of homage watches and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. I mean, they give you the taste of the unobtainable for a very unobtainable, I mean, obtainable price. And, uh, Anyway, that, that that's the whole topic, but today we're going to be talking about one homage watch. So let me give you a little back history. Back on uh, October 26, 2017, Philips uh, Auction in New York uh, sold a Paul Newman, the Paul Newman's Paul Newman. And seriously, that thing, that Rolex Daytona sold for around $17, $18 million. And it was the most expensive watch ever sold at auction at that time. And I remember actually when that auction happened I had been collecting for uh, roughly about two years and honestly I just couldn't believe that a watch uh, could be sold for 18 million dollars let alone a Rolex I was like they're expensive but that expensive yeah anyway since my discovery of that Daytona the watch was stunning and ever since uh, I saw it I knew that I wanted a watch that resembled that one because obviously I couldn't afford it so uh, you know that the the shape and and just the, the colors and just the way that the watch just looked was so cool right but anyway um, Three years ago, I ended up picking up my reverse Panda Omega Speedmaster reference number 3511.50. And honestly, that satisfied that desire for eh, a little bit. I mean, you know, it, it left that that taste of that Daytona a little bit, uh, or quenched that, that taste, I should say, or that thirst. Uh, anyway, uh, review or link of the review of that watch in the description. But honestly, in my opinion, that's one of the most undervalued uh, Speedmasters on the market, along with other uh you know reduce models and automatic models aside from the professional line but that is a topic for another uh, video but anyways as i progress i got more and more into the hobby i discovered the value of the seagull st19 movement it's a hand-wound chronograph movement uh that was brought to the world of affordable watches uh, obviously you find them all throughout aliexpress and whatnot but uh, honestly, I've, I've just looked at those watches, uh, the Seagull, the, what is the 1963, and it just, I don't like the dial. I'm sorry, I know it's a super popular model, but I just couldn't find a watch in the market that really kind of satisfied my needs, or spoke to me, I should say, uh, or so I thought. So <laughs> let me tell you, when I first discovered that they made a homage of the Pony Man Daytona that was actually powered by the movement that I wanted to get, the Seagull ST19 movement, and it cost around 200 bucks, I was like, all right, maybe that's the one for me. Let me pick it up. So let's be clear before we start the review. This is not a one-to-one -one homage of the Paul Newman. It does have, you know, some similarities. A lot of similarities but when I wear it I personally don't feel like I'm wearing a Rolex or a Paul Newman Daytona and that's definitely a good thing uh, and honestly to my surprise the watch was beautiful and actually very very well constructed for the price I actually paid around 190 bucks I believe on eBay and honestly yeah it was cool it exceeded my expectations they even included a nice travel pouch and yeah I, I actually do like it so let's talk about the watch now the watch measures in at 39 millimeters and it's 48 millimeters from lug to lug it has a 20 millimeter lug width uh, and you know this is a thick boy it's almost 16 millimeters thick however the thickness is due to that dome crystal and and that display case back. On the reverse panda style dial, we do find three sub dials that indicate the running seconds, 24 hours, and 30 minutes. 
an, an interesting thing to note is that Alpha chose to use the same numerals and piston style indicators in the subdials as the original uh, Daytona or the Paul Newman. And at the 12 o'clock, we do find the Alpha logo, the word Alpha, 1993, mechanical, chronometer, and below at the 6 o'clock, the word chronograph. So honestly, in my opinion, that is a lot of text. And uh, I don't know, the Alpha logo at the 12 uh, would have been sufficient for me, but oh well. The polished hands along with the polished indices are actually nicely finished and the arrow style chronograph hand plays very well with the red minute indicators on the outer dial. But unfortunately, the chronograph hand doesn't align when you reset the chronograph, or sometimes it does. Overall, the colors contrast very nicely. I mean, it's a monochrome palette. You can't go wrong with that. You splash a little bit of red, and in my opinion, you got a winner. To my surprise, this watch has loom. Not plenty of it, but honestly, I don't know you know, what we're really using the loom for and what kind of loom they're using it uh, on, on this watch. It fades rather quickly. I don't even know why it's there but personally i don't mind as i'm not used to you know loom in my vintage watches they typically don't have any loom but playing with the vintage aesthetics protecting the dial is an acrylic crystal that is very dome and in certain angles that distorts the dial i personally would like to see a sapphire crystal of course but i understand why they chose to go this route um i have unfortunately put a few hairline scratches on mine um uh, maybe at some point i'll buff those out out uh, with some toothpaste or poly watch or I don't know well we'll, we'll figure something out <laughs> around the crystal we do find a fixed 316 L stainless steel uh, tachymeter scale bezel I know you can buy these uh, watches these alpha watches with a black bezel but this thing steel look in my opinion uh, just is so understated and uh, yeah, I just like it. The The case is constructed, of course, of 316 L stainless steel, and it does uh, feature a mixture of brushed surfaces on the top of the lugs and polished surfaces uh, throughout. So the edges of the lugs do feel a little sharp, and the finishing overall is okay if I... If I'm being honest, the case does feature one of my favorite features, and that is drill lugs. Uh, I change my straps constantly, and this feature minimizes the risk of me scratching the case uh, because I have before uh, on watches that don't have this but anyway on the right hand side of the watch we do find two screw down chronograph pushers and a screw down crown that has been signed with the company logo when i uh, first got the watch for some reason i was under the impression that this had 50 meters of water resistance but unfortunately it only has 30 meters so yeah <laughs> Honestly, I know this feature was uh, of the screw down pushers and, and crowns was mostly implemented so the watch would resemble the Paul Newman. But, you know, screw down pushers for me personally tend to be a lot of work sometimes, especially when you want to time something with a chronograph and you can because you have to stop and unscrew it. You know, so on the spot, uh, chronograph pushers uh, with screw down, uh, you know, features just don't work but anyway uh, most importantly having to wind the watch every two days or less than two days and having to unscrew the crown is kind of a pain so but we'll get more into that at the end the oyster style bracelet with push pins features hollow end links and it's mostly brush only on the sides of the bracelet you we find a little bit of polishing it does feature a stamp friction clasp with the alpha logo and eight micro adjust so you know wearability should not be a problem i mean the bracelet Overall, it's actually really comfortable and it makes the watch look more expensive than what it really is or what it costs. I personally took it off the bracelet the minute that I got it and honestly, I wore it on a number of different straps. However, you know, two days ago, about a day ago, I got around to sizing this bracelet and I actually been wearing the watch and I gotta say, it actually makes this watch feel and look a little more vintage and more just kind of like a sporty watch. And it's nice, it's loose, it's jingly jangly, how uh, my friend TGV says. So yeah, I, I, I like it, it's, it's very wearable, it's very versatile. So 
it's a cool watch. I, I overall I I like the bracelet. It's not the greatest, but I think it's okay. So I opted to go for the display case back. I mean, come on, that's the real reason why I bought this watch. And in case you're new to watches, getting a mechanical chronograph movement is really expensive. I mean, the entry point is typically a little over a thousand bucks. So the fact that this watch costs less than two hundred bucks or around two hundred bucks is incredible. So the Alpha runs on a hand-wound, non-hacking Seagull ST19 column wheel chronograph movement. Well, that's, a hand, that's a mouthful. <laughs> More specifically, the ST1903 variant. So when you engage the chronograph, you get a nice audible click, and the pushers feel like they have enough resistance on them. And that's a very nice feature of mechanical chronographs. So the ST19 is also known as the Venus 175 movement. You see the Swiss sold their machines and tooling to the Chinese for their Air Force chronographs. And this is back in the 60s. So the Chinese made some small improvements uh, to the movements, such as a higher beat rate. Uh, it beats at 21,600 beats per hour and an inca block shock protection. The Siegel ST1903 has about 42 hours of power reserve. That's about how many hours mine lasts. However, if you engage the chronograph function, that power reserve lowers down to more around, I don't know, 37 to 40 hours depending on how much you actually interact with the chronograph so visually the st19 is very intriguing it's an intriguing design with many visible gears and even more intriguing are the simple but nice perlage you know geneva striping and chemically blued screws i have yet to test the accuracy and to be honest i don't wear my watch is enough uh, for that information to even be relevant to me and especially when the watch costs 200 bucks i don't really care but for the most part it is pretty accurate okay so my friend david schwartz happens to own the cream dial version and we thought it would be fun for him to include me in his review and vice versa therefore i am going to tell you five positive things about this watch and he will tell you five negative things about this watch and on his video go check it out uh, you will find my five negatives and you will find his five positives so with that said let's get into it all right so number one the manual wine movement although it is annoying this is you know this is the watch that every time you wear it and you wind it it really gives you that sense of peace serenity and it really connects you with the watch you know knowing that you're powering this guy i know same thing with the with the rotor and automatic but this is different so i would say that's that's definitely a positive Okay, case dimensions. The watch wears very comfortable on my six and seven eighth inch wrist. And with the case measuring less than, you know, 49 millimeters or 48 millimeters, this watch can be worn by people with smaller wrists. And my wife has actually worn this watch and it looks great on her. Number three, drill lugs. You get that cool vintage look with the functionality. I mean, what's not to love? Uh, okay, number four, screw down crown and pushers. Although I said, they're a pain and really serve no purpose as far as water resistance you know on this model they actually look pretty cool all right last one number five the price i mean for 200 bucks you get a lot for your money and this can be a timepiece that can definitely be a conversation starter especially without this play case back and the movement and i mean there's somebody that's not into watches is definitely a cool piece so anyway okay dave let me know what your negatives are What's up, Miguel? Thanks for having me on your channel in this video today. Really appreciate it. I got to represent the Tudor Bros. Real quick, customary wristwatch check. Boom, I'm rocking my Tudor Black Bay 41. Love this watch. So Tudor Bros, you know where it's at. All right, let's get into it. The five cons of the Alpha Daytona. You guys know I got one of these as well. And I got to say, number one, let's jump into it. The Loom sucks. <laughs> it just... I don't know, we can say it better. It could be better, let's say it that way, so we're nice. Um, the loom could be better. There are little loom pips around the dial at each hour, and there's of course a loom in the hour and minute hand, but it is terrible. It's uh, might as well not be there as far as I'm concerned, because unless you're coming out from direct sunlight into a dark room, you'll see it, but it won't last for very long. 
which is kind of useless. Okay, number two, we're only getting 50 meters of water resistance with this watch, which is kind of surprising considering there's a screw down crown and screw down pushers. So exhibition case back, really cool. I would not trade that for 100 meters water resistance because I love to see the movement. And you know, part of the problem is I've seen other chronograph watches that don't have screw down pushers or a screw down crown and they also have 50 meters water resistance. So it would have been really cool to see 100 meters on this one because then you could get in the water with it with the right straps or bracelet. But unfortunately, it's only 50. All right, number three, and that is, this is probably subjective. It's the inconvenience of having to constantly hand wind this watch or set the time if you don't wear it every day and wind it. So this could be the case for any hand wind mechanical watch and it's just needs to be said as a con because the way I look at it is each time you have to unscrew, wind it, screw down the crown, that's a potential for cross threading or any issues to arise with the crown itself. And again, whether you wind it every day or you let it sit there and you go to put it on, you're still gonna have to take unscrew that crown, set the time, wind it, screw it back down. So a bit of an inconvenience. I'm just keeping it 100. All right, number four is the potential for QC issues or quality control concerns. And that's always possible at this price point. And being that the manufacturer is located overseas, any issues you have, you're talking about now shipping it, having to possibly pay that shipping cost, waiting a long period of time for it to come back. And this isn't just with Alpha. I mean, this could be with a lot of different watch brands out there, but it is something that is a con and just has to be considered. When I looked at a few forums, people mentioned they were having some quality control issues with the crowns, the pushers. So that could be a potential you know, issue. Just got to throw it out there. And last, but in no particular order is the lack of eligibility on this watch. And what I mean specifically is because of the case dimensions and because of the size of the dial itself, those three sub dials are very small and they have a lot going on. I love the charm of the piston style details on the sub dials, but with the lines that are dividing them and then with the actual hands being in high polish and just a simple stick hand, it's kind of hard to see at a quick glance. You almost have to adjust or shift the watch in a certain lighting to be able to read it. So it's just not the easiest in terms of eligibility. So I just gotta say, that's the last con. So Miguel, again, thanks for having me on to talk about the cons of the watch. And I hope you all watching enjoy the rest of the video. Take care. Yeah, Dave does bring up some pretty good points. Let me know what you think in the comments section. All right. so. Overall, this is a very cool watch, and although homage watches, as I said previously, are not really my jam, this particular piece has found a permanent uh, place in my collection. And honestly, I look forward to wearing it a lot in the coming years and yeah, putting a lot of scratches on it and whatnot. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for getting the channel to 4,000 subscribers. It's been three years of making over 230 videos and it's been a lot of fun so if you don't mind please comment like subscribe it really does mean a lot to me it keeps me motivated to keep bringing more videos and more topics so as always stay healthy and stay humble thank you so much take care